Hello and welcome to Integrid TV in association with Enjavati. Roberto Zangrandi joins me now, Secretary General for, of EDSO for Smart Grids. Happy to be here with you, Rose. Thank you for joining us, Roberto. EDSO for Smart Grids has been in the news only earlier this month um, for your bid to be the EU DSO entity. And I was just wondering in our conversation whether we can unpack that a bit more what's kind of led you to make that bid and what the positive outcomes would be yeah. for, your, for So this is uh, very simple. The uh, Commission proposed uh, uh, legislation within the clean energy package uh, which calls for uh, the uh, DSOs that are not belonging to vertically integrated undertakings, it means that are already legally unbundled, uh, to join and uh, uh, supply the Commission the framework for uh, uh, EU DSO entity. What does it mean? It means a consultative body uh, to provide the technical expertise to the Commission on uh, six uh, large areas uh, concerning the typical job of the DSOs in the distribution of electric power market. And we welcome this in a, in a totally because it is uh, uh, the acknowledgement by the Commission of the role of the DSOs, uh, in, uh, strategic role of the DSOs mm -hmm. in distributing electricity in connection with the transmission system operator, the TSOs. The TSOs enjoy since several years now, five years, uh, a similar body which is called ENSO-E mm -hmm. and provides a technical consultancy to the Commission in the area of the network codes and all the technical issues, regulatory issues that affect the transmission of electric power. So this is the uh, this is the, the reason uh, we welcome that. Then we proposed that during the Florence Forum to the Commission to see uh, EDSO for smart grids as the vehicle. Uh, to go faster toward the creation of the EU DSO entity. The reason is that uh, uh, the statutes and the uh, operative framework of EDSO for smart grids already reflects what is uh, the re basic requirement within the proposed legislation from the Commission. So we already fit in that framework. Uh, we should uh, do some minor uh, retouch and redefinition to our statutes uh, to completely fit in that uh, framework and deliver the entity to the Commission ahead of time uh, with uh, uh, already experimented activities in the, uh, in the areas where the Commission wants to involve us. Of course, the legislation package is under discussion there are amendments affecting the creation of the EU DSO entity. The process is still long. What we esteem it is uh, within one year time uh, when, the, um, uh, when the decision will be finalized and uh, the so-called trialogue will deliver the final design of the EU DSO entity. What, assuming that happens and that you're given that... Um status, how would that improve the role of your members, the DSOs, in their bid to be, well, you know, get more value uh, from the grid? The, uh, not just our members, but all those DSOs that uh, will be willing to join uh, the process of being the vehicle towards the EU DSO entity will have the opportunity to participate in shaping the governance and the shaping the rules of procedure of, uh, of this entity. Uh, the legislation proposal is very clear. It is up to the DSOs to deliver the Commission and ACER uh, the uh, statutes uh, and the operative functioning scheme for uh, the EU DSO entity. So that job, if it is done collectively by the DSOs, uh, I would say preferably the already legally unbundled will reflect the view of the industry of distribution electric power in Europe. Of course, there have been pressure 
pressures to involve also the smaller DSOs. Uh, these have been comprehended uh, within the conclusions of uh, the Florence Forum uh, in May. Uh, there is also a recommendation to find for the member states uh, a role within this entity. Uh, I believe that uh, something uh, can be reached in terms of uh, uh, cooperation among the DSOs um, through a forum discussion that can be that can be uh, started uh, also uh, uh, very soon. Uh, let's see what uh, the final legislation will be, but in the meanwhile, I believe that our responsibility is to deliver an experiment that can help com the Commission, the Council, and the Parliament uh, to see, as the Latin would say, in corpore vili, uh, what is going to happen with such an entity. Okay, and would that entity help with negotiations with TSOs in well, the, the cooperation of, uh, with the TSOs is uh, specifically uh, previewed uh, within the uh, legislative proposal and it is uh, de facto an acknowledgement to something that already exists. Uh, EDSO for smart grids and uh, the other uh, DSO association actively uh, do cooperate with NSOE since uh, a couple of years on uh, many issues. Uh, we have got uh, a couple of uh, operative platforms up and running on uh, different uh, aspects of uh, uh, the relations, operative relations between DSOs and TSOs. Uh, we are ready to face together the implication that will be uh, comprehended within the uh, new network codes uh, discussion and uh, uh, we think that uh, the Cooperation with the TSO is not only mandatory, uh, but it is also well functioning since uh, we have already found uh, quite a, a, a good way to, to, to perform such, such a cooperation. Of course, it's not always every day easy. Uh, we do have sometimes uh, different interests, different priorities, uh, but uh, for instance, the discussion on the data management uh, platform have demonstrated that uh, we can sit around the table and reach a solution. At this event, um, EDSO is showcasing a number of projects, and I wonder if you could just touch on a couple of those that are relevant. Uh, I will touch on the, on the most important of them, which is the ETIPSNET. Uh, ETIPSNET is uh, a technology platform, uh, and uh, it is chaired by the former Secretary General of the TSOs, and uh, vice chaired by a board member of uh, uh, EDSO for Smart Grid. So we're, we're, this is already a good uh, example of uh, joining forces. Uh, the working groups uh, do uh, see the presence of uh, DSOs and TSOs, and uh, the point uh, uh, of ETIPSNET is to design uh, the, future, the future of the smart grids and uh, the future of the strategy that will affect the smart grids. So something like this you can do just uh, together. And doing this together is uh, the, the, the best example of cooperation and commitment uh, in uh, permitting the energy transition in the future. It's not just the smart grids, it's not the just the relations between DSO and TSO, it is the presence of other stakeholders of the industry of the suppliers of technology and application that are needed to do so. So let's say that uh, ETIPSNET uh, is uh, uh, not only a marketplace uh, for ideas, but uh, it is uh, uh, really uh, the playing ground to design uh, the, the energy transition. We, uh, we are very, very confident uh, that uh, the Commission will put all the uh, needed effort uh, within this, uh, this platform. Roberto, thank you. We've run out of time, so we have to leave it there. But thank yeah, you for joining okay. us. Um, and thank you for watching Integrid TV in association with Enjirati. Um, you can watch plenty more of these videos, um, so stay tuned.